Hello everybody and welcome, this is EDS here bringing you guys another little tutorial video. In this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to download and set up Desnome Nintendo DS emulator for your computer. This is going to be for Windows PC, it is not going to be used for Mac for this tutorial. Um, and also do not, please do not ask me about how to get the games, um, just Google them and you'll find them. I cannot actually give you the games myself. But, in the link in the description will be the, the page that you see on screen now, Desume. Um, here we have Desume 0.9.11, which is the most recent version. I believe it is the final version. There could be another version that came out afterwards, but this is the current one they have on the, on the page. So go ahead and click there, and head on to the download page. Here you can download Desume, the binaries for... Windows, either 32-bit, 64-bit, or 32-bit for older versions. You can also download this for Mac, and for other platforms you have the source code here. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and download the 64-bit version, since I have a 64-bit computer. Which will bring you to this website here. Give it a few seconds and it'll start downloading. Now I'm going to go ahead and go right-click and show in folder. This is just how I prefer to open these types of files. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit, or actually, here we go, I'll do. I'm drag it to the desktop. I'm just going to go ahead and right click, click extract here. You're going to need WinZip or WinRAR in order to extract the files. And here you can see we have all of the README files. These give you information on uh, various things about the emulator. The authors, people who created it, the change log, which, de which details any alterations. And then we have the exe file. I'll kind of put it somewhere a little bit more visible, I guess. Right here. Double click it. And it'll open up right here. This will be the default window size. You can change it as you wish. So let me go ahead and configure a little bit of the information here. Certain games may have some issues, in particular, Pokemon Black and White 2 can occasionally have issues on lower end systems because they were more late Nintendo DS releases. But let me go ahead and get right into opening up a game. So I'll go to open ROM here. Should open me up to, oh no, open a different folder. So I'll go back to my desktop, my downloads. And here I have my Nintendo DS games. I have them all in zip files. So in this case, I think we'll go with, why not? We'll go with something that's a little bit harder to run. Go with Pokemon White 2. That's probably gonna blast my eardrums in a minute. Also, don't try to click anything else if it's trying to load for the first time. It might load a little bit slowly. There. See, now it's created a bunch of files to the left here, as you can see. Now the game right now is running very slowly. Also, I'm going to go here to sound settings. I'm actually going to lower the sound all the way. I don't need to hear the music right now. We'll go ahead and configure around with some of these settings to get better performance. Because you see right after downloading, the game performance is pretty bad. This title screen usually goes much faster. So first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm actually going to go to configure the controller. So go to config and go to controller config. And if you have a controller already plugged in, it will, in most cases, automatically recognize the controller. And in this case, I'm just setting up each of the controls. I usually don't bother with these four, up, left, right, down, left, down, right. But once you're done with that, go ahead and click OK. You can also go into Config, go to Emulation Settings. I usually don't tinker around with these external BIOS images. You can go through the settings here, external firmware image. Again, I don't usually uh, work with that either. CPU emulation mode, this is enabling me. This will get you zero to 50% speed ups. It is optimal because it's still, it, it's optimal because it's may still, optional because it may still contain some bugs due mostly to newness, which can safely, can safely be fixed in time. You have to turn the block size to prevent games breaking. Okay, so go ahead and click OK. It will need to reset the emulator. 
Now that should give some performance boost, but it doesn't do much. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to emulation settings. No, 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 not emulation settings. Hold on a minute. Uh, hotkey configuration. This is something that is very important for me personally, because I always set the fast forward button to be either. Oops. There we go. I'll kind of just set that to something else. I always set that to toggle for the fast forward speed. This lets me actually fast forward through the game a bit. You can actually see we are getting good frame rate for the most part. And I can see the fast forward button does work. But we should be able to get a little bit better frame performance from this. Let me tinker around here. Firmware settings, that's just about the uh, actual 3DS or the DS if you actually have one. Um, I usually keep uh, frame skip to two because uh, it actually does get better performance. It does sometimes look a little choppy, but it's not something that you would really notice very much unless you were looking out for it. You can also change the LCD layout to horizontal or a single LCD, but I always keep it on the vertical. And if I try to change it, I would usually keep it horizontal or I would just leave it alone beside that. For me, I get a little disoriented if I don't have it vertically. You can change the screen gap, which is the gap between the top and bottom. Change the window size manually, or you can also just shrink it this way as well. Doesn't matter which way you keep it. Um, Unless you change a setting that changes the aspect ratio, it'll always stay the aspect ratio that it currently is. Okay. So you can also display the FPS. See it's running at about 60 FPS, which is good. I'm actually gonna keep that off though. Uh, let's see, magnification filter, rotation. Yeah, you can rotate the, the, the screen if you really want to, but I don't really see a point in why. But, uh, you know, it's an option if you want to take it, I guess. You can also activate cheats through the Tools tab. Just go to List. Search up any action replay code you might want. Go ahead and paste it in here. Click Save, and then you have the cheats active there. All right. Back to emulation settings again. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's much that I can do in there. Firmware, already went there. You can also decide to not have the frame rate limited. This can give a slight improvement in speed. Also, just so I have this game kind of already having a file, I'm actually gonna show you real quick as well. If you have a memory file from say your DS or an R4 cartridge or something, you can go up here to file and go to import backup memory. So in this case, I'm actually gonna back up a bit to my, go right here back to my NDS save files. NDS saves there. And I'll go ahead and load this uh, file right here. This will show up here. It'll say save data cannot reliably determine from the file you're importing. Basically this, you don't have to really worry about any of this. Just go ahead and click okay. It will reset the game. And then we'll go ahead and restart. And you see I have the save file there. So performance is pretty good right out of the box, honestly. I say right out of the box, but that's not really out of the box. But uh, either way, we also have the ability to fast forward the game with the uh, whatever button you set to toggle the fast forward command. Now the NDS em emulator for Desmume should work on most uh, mid to high range or most mid range or higher Android phones, you can actually download it on Android. Um, it should also work on even some mid to low range PCs. Uh, I remember I had a, the, the first computer that I used with the YouTube channel, uh, the one that I first had before I had my laptop. I used that with uh, Desmume and I had some issues recording the game, but as far as playing the game, I didn't really have many issues. Now my specs are not too high end. I have 12 gigs of RAM and I have a 2.4 gig CP or 2.4 gigahertz uh, Intel i3 7100 CPU. So it's not too bad. 
But uh, outside of that, you can also load save states, save from them as well. I don't recommend using save states often. It can sometimes break a game. Uh, you can also record the actual footage. You can export the backup memory as well in case you want to restart your save file, but you don't want to get rid of your save file. Outside of that, there's not really much else to go over. Oh, here's one thing, actually. This is really only important in Pokemon games, but if you want to, you can set the GBA slot to a GBA cartridge, go to Browse, and if you already have a Game Boy Advanced Pokemon game, let me see where mine are here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. See, so I have already a bunch of games here. Now, granted, this will not work with uh, Pokemon White 2, of course, but you can go ahead and select that. Let me go ahead and boot up another Pokemon game that I have. Kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. So this case will boot up Pokemon Platinum. And this will run pretty fast too. Also, I'm gonna go with the same thing here. Go to import backup memory. And here I have a save file that I had from a few weeks ago. Go ahead and put that in. This is actually a save file for a video that I'm planning on doing later. Now, with the Pokemon Sapphire uh, cartridge in the GBA slot of the emulator, I can actually go to the PAL Park in Pokemon Platinum, Diamond, Pearl, Heart, Gold, or Soul Silver and transfer the Pokemon from the Game Boy emulator or Game Boy, uh, the Game Boy game through the GBA slot in the emulator and actually transfer them to the PAL Park and then bring them up into Pokemon Platinum. Now, granted, since I always have Poke Pika Hex, I don't really use that, but if you want to, you have the option to do so. For the most part, my DS games are pretty much limited to Pokemon games, but I'll go ahead and show Maybe one or two other ones here real quick. This is a good one. Just to kind of show you that it does work on a variety of different games. In this case, we have Super Mario 64 DS. Not exactly sure if it's better than the uh, 64 version, but uh, you know, it's a thing, I guess. Also, the FPS counter, when you do have it on, it's not always 100% accurate, or it's a little bit hard to read on occasion. Hence why I usually tend to keep it off. Plus, it takes up a large chunk of the screen. Now, of course, you can increase the window size if you cease, if you uh, feel so inclined to do so. I can actually grab the damn thing. Oops. Why can't I grab it? There we go. Let's see if I actually get a chance to frickin' move. No? Okay. Well, either way, I think that's actually gonna go ahead and do it for this video. It, there's not a lot to the Desume emulator. Um, for the most part, unless you have a really, really low-end system, uh, Desume should be able to work right out of the box. Oh yeah, here you go. You can see right here it says I can migrate from Sapphire after I put the file in there. So I might as well go ahead and click that. I'm not actually going to do the uh, migrating, but I can show you at least. See, it actually has all the Pokemon from my Sapphire file. I can go ahead and do that too. Yeah, if you want to do that, you can. That's up to you guys, though. But yeah, there's not much else to talk about with Desume. It's pretty easy to actually set the darn thing up. And uh, the main speed hack is the dynamic recompiler. That's the main thing that increases the speed of your uh, of the emulation. Outside of that, I think that's going to go into it for this video, guys. Sorry it's a little bit long for something so simple, but I kind of wanted to show a little bit more about like the game compatibility for this emulator. But anyway, in case you guys... Have any other questions regarding the video or the Desmond emulator in particular without asking me about the games and how to get them? Go ahead and leave those comments in the comment section down below. 
And until next time, this has been ZDS. Make you for following one video at a time, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good night, everybody.